It's a shame to think that Jinro the Wolf Brigade is most known for being a technical masterpiece in human animation. It of course is, but underneath the layers of animation lies a story and setting that seldom sci-fi anime or movies are able to achieve. I don't think people give the story and setting enough credit as they should do. To reinforce the claims of the quality of the narrative, let's take the live action adaptation of Jinro by Kim Ji Woon as an example of how much Jinro's quality is based upon its narrative. Spoilers ahead. It's no secret that live action adaptations of anime have never really been well received by anime fans or even non-anime fans. Death Note, Bleach, Full Metal Alchemist, Dragon Ball Z, super successful anime that have polarizing or just downright awful adaptations, which is understandable given the format. Within less than two hours, the film has to cram in an entire 50 plus episodes worth of content and character development. Although Death Note can largely be considered a separate entity from the anime, but Jinro is a movie. If Kim Ji Woon really wanted to, he could have done a shot for shot recreation of Jinro and ended up with something at least average in the eyes of most anime fans. But Jinro weirdly wants to have its Death Note cake and eat it too. The film is essentially a beat-for-beat -beat remake of the 1999 anime, but the film is not only longer, but it contains extra characters, a different location, and most importantly, the ending has been drastically changed with no consideration to the previous two hours. In case you haven't seen either of these films, Jinro the Wolf Brigade is about how military institutions can permanently change and mold men into beasts, incapable of reverting back to such human forms. To conclude this idea, the main character of the film, Kazuki, kills the girl that he has fallen in love with. Although Although there is some reluctance, the film informs us that he is the one that kills her and that the order was given by his higher ups. You also need to understand that the previous scene was him massacring every single member of the opposing police force, further reinforcing his beast nature. Jinro 2018 is a complete left turn from its predecessor. Although it does contain that same scene of brutally murdering the other police force in fantastic Kim Ji Woon style, the Korean Kazuki then decides to stop playing by the organization's rules after being ordered to kill the girl. If this was as far of a departure as Death Note was, then I think you could probably cut the film some slack in terms of switching up the ending, but the film doesn't do that. The film is just a recreation. Opening scene explaining the political climate, riot scene with molotovs and other violent acts, the wolf brigade running through the sewers murdering terrorists, the suicide bomb scene, the training scene, the framing of the main character scene, and of course the ending sewer scene. It feels so jarring to be presented with what is essentially the same template for Jinro, and then be completely sidelined by the ending message of the film. With the original, it's mostly left somewhat ambiguous what the ultimate goals of each side are, up until they are revealed of course, which can sometimes make the first watch a jarring experience. But when you've finished it, you start to see all the pieces click into place. The 2018 film just has all these elements essentially laid out before you, with no potential for anything extra. The secondary female terrorist character is just written out after the Sky Tower scene, and given one small ending scene with, I didn't even notice that it was her during it. She exists solely so players at home can score points for flashy fight scene and torture scene on their Kim Ji Woon bingo cards. Now look, I am a big Kim Ji Woon fan. I loved his previous film, The Age of Shadows, as well as I Saw the Devil and The Good, The Bad and The Weird. A Bittersweet Life is alright, but The Wolf Brigade is his worst. But the film has his auteur trappings all over it. Flashy and well-executed fight scenes, torture scenes, and an overt pro-independent Korean message, which Jinro didn't have. But I do think his influence on the film has led to the narrative undoing itself. It would be like if Wes Anderson was to do Rakugo Shinju, or if Edgar Wright was to tackle In This Corner of the World. There would of course be the signature style, but in the process of that, it would affect the film and how its narrative was presented. Jinro's quiet and almost subdued nature lends to the film's narrative and is reinforced through the mostly dark and brown colour scheme of the film. The Wolf Brigade is a mess of greens, browns, bright purples, and whitish blues. Lastly, the adaptation cannot match or exceed the emotional quality of the original. For example, please take a look at the suicide scene from the start of the film and tell me which you think conveys more emotion and depth. Without question, the original is a much more compelling piece of film. The expression on the girl's face is legitimate and without the tear cliché, and the film is completely silent once the pin is pulled, whereas music is played within the background of the Wolf Brigade. I understand that subtlety is not really at the front of Kim Ji Woon's mind, but he has done it before. The ending to I Saw the Devil is evidence enough. The question I keep thinking about when comparing these two is why would you borrow so many elements from the original, but yet try to stand out in the most nonsensical way? The impact of these decisions from the question 
ultimately ruin the film's narrative. And hopefully from this video, you've understood that Jinro's narrative is actually supremely crafted and well supported by the other aspects of the film, whereas The Wolf Brigade is an example of how even some minor changes can completely flip the intention of the narrative. In closing, I'm reminded of the Berserk 90s anime, and how when the 2016 series came out, people started treating 90s Berserk as this almost masterpiece of anime, which it rightfully is. I feel like Jinro is in the same camp. It does have the fantastic animation, but now you've seen how well structured and delicate its narrative is. I'm Kazimoto, subscribe and follow me on Twitter, and please share this video around as well as my other 12 Days of Anime videos. Adios.